Hello, good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Hi, Juliana, Maria da Penha, Kate, Diane, Odiane, Rosane. Obrigada, thanks for joining. Obrigada por aparecer. Meu nome é Kelly Tavares. Sou guia de turismo aqui no Rio de Janeiro e hoje estaremos fazendo uma visita ao recém-inaugurado Museu de Arte Afro-Brasileira e História da Cultura Afro-Brasileira. So I've just said uh, in Portuguese, hi Gilad, welcome. Uh, we are just starting here a tour, a virtual tour, to know a little bit on this visit to the Mucab or the Museum of History, Cultural History of the Afro-Brazilian. And this is the Museu de História e Cultura Afro-Brasileira. Hello, Nicolaus. For those of you who would like to know more about our culture, of Brazilian culture, this is a nice place where through art, we can learn a little bit more. There is a nice sound of the sea on the background And I'd like to know if you are hearing me well. How are you doing today? Today there is a beautiful day here in Rio de Janeiro with a blue sky, chilly, like the wind is blowing and it's 1 p.m. Loud and clear. Thank you, Nicolas, for supporting. Please let me know in case in any of the rooms while we walk, if there is any uh, interruption in the Wi-Fi signal. Hola, Juliana. Hello. Uh, because this is a very old building. We are at uh, one of the first public schools in Latin America. It was founded by Dom Pedro II, the Dom Peter II, Emperor of Brazil, around 18, in the years 1870s. So this is a very important institution of education or educational institution. And it was a project from the empire, Brazilian Portuguese empire here in Brazil, to implement the first public schools to the population. And I will share a little bit of that history with you from the building, but mainly from the arts heritage and cultural heritage of our history here in Brazil, and specifically in the little Africa region, which is iconic, and it's where the museum is located as well. So my name is Kelly Tavares. I'm a tour guide leading walking tours, cultural tours, and cultural experiences in Rio de Janeiro in a connection and in a partnership with other guides all over the world, focusing on our Black History walks and heritage. It's what a lot of our Brazilian culture is about. So indigenous and Black voices giving voices to history that was and had been erased throughout time. Uh, this is an educational experience to share our wealth and through, through culture. And it's an arts uh, and anti-racist initiative from my part, who is a tour guide and an art educator. My agency here is Rio and Cantos. So for those of you who want to write and spell it here, you can follow my channel. There is a button here on the bottom left side of the screen. You can just hit follow there. And uh, at Rio and Cantos, R I O. E-N-C-A-N-T-O-S is my channel on YouTube and Instagram. Please follow me there and keep posted of other things that we promote here as well. So this tour on Hey Go is tip-based. It's uh, free. Uh, everybody can access, everybody who has access to Wi-Fi or the internet. And if you were taking the walking tours with me, the historic walking tours in the city center of Rio, this would be something like $20. $20. Uh, in a in a walk around the city, and this, just to give you an idea, this is a way also that we make our incomes, 
and especially also to spread the word about our heritage, our culture, and what we do. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, Graham. We are just starting the walking tour at the Museum uh, of History and Cultural and Culture from the Afro-Brazilian here in Rio de Janeiro, in the Little Africa, in the port area of Rio. All right, so let's go. I'm going to share with you the name of the museum that you can follow on Instagram. They have just inaugurated in uh, last month, and I'm going to show you the surroundings of the museum. There is a sound car coming to the street selling fruits. So it's a grocer's combi, Volkswagen. Hi, Vlasta. We are just showing the combi of that selling eggs and fruits. And a little bit of the outside of the building of the Museum of History and Cultural and Afro-Brazilian Culture as well. So this is the street that, which is located in the Little Africa region. This is street of Pedro, is the Pedro Ernesto Street, is where is located this first public school of Brazil, of Latin America, is one of the first ones in the projects of Dom Pedro II. And you can see some architecture that some of them were changed throughout time and some architecture that brings us to the 18th and 19th century. What you see here is mainly from the 19th century and they could have had like a, a, a prior building that is from a prior time in the 1700s as well. And they were changed, some of them were changed outside, but even though you see some of the colorful buildings from the historic part of the city where the central train station is located. And here the, is one of the parts of the uh, transatlantic slave trade circuit, archaeologic circuit to the memory of the slavery trade, uh, slave trade of Africans to Brazil. So in this street, you also find the lost the hidden cemetery of the New Blacks, which today is the Institute of New Blacks and the lost cemetery uh, where many black people were thrown in a mass grave in the archaeological uh, circuit of this trade that took place in this neighborhood, in this area. It's a very important area, symbolic area, important to understand our culture, our Brazilian culture as a whole, where the samba originated, where the Afro-Brazilian religions were originated as well. And I give tours here in the region, in the Little Africa, for its art, for its archaeologic site, where there is the UNESCO World Heritage Site, and for the women of Ashe, talking about our religions and culture. Today, here's the VLT passing by from this street, going directly to the National Airport of Santos Dumont and it connects with the bus station of Rio as well. So today our focus is at the museum. So I will show you a few rooms inside of the, of the museum and maybe if someone from the staff comes up, I'm gonna introduce that person to you. I won't show everything. I just give you a taste of the, the collection. Here's the director of the museum, Leandro. He's coming to the door. Hello, Leandro, to the vault? Alô, tudo bem? Vou puxar você aqui comigo. So Leandro is here with us, director of the Mukabe Museum. And today, Leandro, we have about uh, 10 people, 10 pessoas participando né, nesse horário comercial. E são pessoas de várias partes do mundo Maravilha. que vêm nesse canal. Né? E dependendo do dia, a gente tem várias pessoas né, que vêm e acompanham. E eles querem ver um pouquinho da nossa coleção. Ótimo, fiquem à vontade e quando puderem venham pessoalmente ao MUCAB, o Museu da História e da Cultura Afro-Brasileira. Será um prazer enorme receber todos e todas aqui na nossa casa, que é um pedacinho desse território da pequena África, cheio de histórias, cheio de enredos, cheio de muitas informações interessantes sobre a história do nosso Brasil. Então, ele disse que você é muito bem-vindo. 
And whenever you can, please come here in person to check the whole collection that will be growing year after year, little by little. And it shows the territory of the area, the territory of Brazil, with our culture, with all of our wealth and history around what black people left as a legacy in this country. Muito obrigada, viu, Leandro? Adeus. Muito obrigada. Então, vou, estou contando um pouquinho da história do prédio e vou passar um pouquinho por aí. Maravilha. Tá, muito obrigada. Tá. So, let's go. So, this museum will tell you protagonisms of memory, pride, and identity is the name of this exhibition. And at the entrance of the, the museum, you already see a carranca. And the carranca is a totem that was used, like as the Vikings used it in their big boats to cross the seas. The carrancas were built in the interior of Minas Gerais to cross and to, put, to be set at the front of the ships of the steamboats to cross the Rio San Francisco, the San Francisco River. And they were sculpted by artists from the interior of Brazil to be set there in the front to protect the sailors from the bad spirits. So as you see in different cultures, uh, the totemic cultures, uh, these, how they connect geographically and globally around the same faith and beliefs. So please feel free to ask me throughout the tour if you want to see something in particular in more details as well, because I can get closer, I can focus on a specific things that is of your interest, and I can acknowledge part of our history based on what you're interested on. Thanks, Vilasta, for joining. Now I'm sharing with you one of the icons of the imperial government of the royal family are the phoenix, mythologic animals of rebirth and symbols of the emperor Dom Pedro II. They make this beautiful, uh, like, pillars to the steps of what was one of the first Latin America, one of the first public schools in Latin America. It was first a school of boys, and here there is a statue of, they call the Negra, the black girl, the black lady. And she's very young, holding uh, a light, that would be lit there uh, in the 19th century. And she's holding, is one of the rare statues representing a black woman in Brazil of that time specifically, because this was done in 1870s to the school in celebration of the law enforcement of the free womb. So what was this law? This law would guarantee the freedom of all black people, enslaved black people. The children would be free after 1971. But many people know, hi Nathan, thanks for joining, that that legislation wasn't really um, that deep in terms of guaranteeing the freedom because the kids, they had to be under uh, the, the, let's say, Let's, let's suppose if I, this girl, if her mother was an enslaved African descent or African woman, she had to stay with her mother until at least she was 21 years old. So in practice, this girl being her mother owned between brats by a, a family, she would be until her 21st day uh, also property of that family, being able to only uh, be free after the 21, her 21st years old. So how they would, uh, in the empire, like uh, Dom Pedro II, how they would form a population, mainly black, without education. So Dom Pedro II implements a lot of public schools in Brazil in order to educate this new free children of the free Womb. And this one was uh, made, this statue was made by a French artist, Maturhan Mouhou. 
And interestingly, uh, she holds the light of enlightenment and knowledge set here in the public school building. And but her feet are still tied in shackles. So this makes us think about this, let's say, freedom between brackets that the population of that time in Brazil would have. Hello, Isabelle. Thanks for joining. So here is the name of the art, the French artist who did this artwork, and I can talk more about the art style in case you you get curious about. My name is Kelly Tavares. I'm an art educator and tour guide here in Brazil, and I'm sharing a little bit of the Museum of Cultural and History of Afro Brazilians. This word. Uh, it was named, entitled the Xilogravura Preta, uh, wood carving uh, print of black print, representing a baiana, one of the typical matriarchal figures that it, and uh, personalities that you can find in places such as Salvador, Rio de Janeiro, and other places of Brazil where they travel, bringing their knowledges of the herbs, as you see them carrying there in the basket, and their knowledge of uh, uh, the orishas. So the tour of women of Axé, I talk about the women of Axé and the Afro-Brazilian religions. And this museum is great to understand a little bit more about that, those religions through the art and through the people who make the connections with the ancestral spirits through the Candomblé and the Umbanda. The title of this work is Oferenda a Liberdade, Offer to Freedom. It's a wood carved print over fabric from the group Chilo Pretura. So maybe you can find and follow them on Instagram if you really like this work here present. Now the museum is currently working on their policies for the acquisition of its collection. And now I want to share with you some of the rooms. This is a big school with a beautiful eclectic architecture with some of the elements of uh, neoclassic and on its architecture. And at the end of the tour, I'm going to share the building from its outside as well. Now, I would like to share a little bit. I won't share everything because I want you to come. This will be constantly changing throughout time since they are growing the, uh, the uh, collection. And this was inaugurated in last month. Can you get entire image postcard? Oh, yes, sure. Entire image or postcard from the building, Diane. Uh, or also remind me that, please, when you come, you see like a beautiful place, a beautiful composition. You can say, hey, Kelly, would you please stop there for my postcard? And I will do that with big pleasure because I get so into showing you around that sometimes I, I forget. So this is a map showing a little bit of the territory of the Little Africa. It's written, my place, meu lugar, my Little Africa, mukab, hashtag. So it's showing the bus station region, the train stations of Central do Brasil, the first favelas, Favela da Providência. We work with a local guide who makes the tours in the first favela. And we show the city center of, Brazil, of Rio de Janeiro here with hills and favelas. Can you hear the song on the back? A little bit of the batuques sounds that originated with the drums, the regions, and the samba music here in the Little Africa. And this is the circuit uh, tagged here in these colored pins where we do the walking tour throughout the Little Africa. I've done it virtually with you through Hegel just to show some of these places, but this is a, a big archaeological complex, and I just showed you like uh, in parts, different 45 or 30 minutes of stream, so I can give you idea of this area, where I was born. Rio, 
has a lot, a lot to offer beyond beaches and beyond Corcovado and Sugarloaf Mountain. And as a tour guide and art educator, I like to share our culture and heritage. For example, I talked to you in the Women of Ashe tour about Tia Lucia, Aunt Lucia. Aunt Lucia, she was an artist who painted these paintings and a storyteller, a griot. She already passed and she was always present there at the cemetery of New Blacks telling us her stories. She used to tell stories to the children, to visitors, and she has her artworks in this museum and in other museums throughout the world. And here in the Mar Museum as well, where I will be doing a transmission a live stream la next month on Tuesday, the 14th, 2 p.m. minus GMT, uh, minus 3 GMT time. So Tia Lucia, one of the griots and matriarchs of this region, was also from Salvador, from the origins of Bahia. And she would represent on her artworks our culture and her childhood in the countryside as well. In this here, in this work, she says, White Dog from Aunt Lucia. She did some abstract works as well, what was rare for me, and look at the quality and the, 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 the collections, the, com the complementary, complementary composition that she makes with these complementary colors. It's, her work was very unique and she was a person of faith and a lot of love she had in her heart to share through her words. And it's very nice. We have uh, honors to homage to her on street art throughout the city and especially throughout the Little Africa region. Here she is representing the dragon to which St. George fought for. And St. George, patron saint of England, who is also representing Xangu, the Orisha of war here in Rio de Janeiro. So these are some of the places Hi, Camille. Hi, Ruth. Thanks for joining. We've done the, our tour in the Quilombo da Pedra do Sal. We've done our tour in the close passing through the church of Largo São Francisco da Parainha. We've passed through the UNESCO World Heritage Site of the Valongo Wharf. We've also done on the live stream tour of Little Africa the slave market, and we haven't done the cemetery of New Blacks, which I'm talking now with the, the, the guardians there, the perpetrators there, to see if we can organize one of our um, live streams there to show you uh, a, a place that's very important for us as well. Today we are focusing on the Centro Cultural José Bonifácio, or the Museum of History, and Afro-Brazilian culture is where we are today. In this museum, you find photography, documents, artworks. There is a shop that we, I can show you if you want as well with some of the clothes and jewelry and paintings from local artists and a little bit of the building, which was a school of boys. Now I will share uh, a little bit of some of the artworks of contemporary artists. You see exhibitions of photos that will talk about the black movement in Brazil. And you have different media being showcased, such as these is a performance, a video performance of artist Rona. So you can follow Rona. Hi, Amy, Emma. Hi, Camilo. You can follow Rona Artist on Instagram. And the name of this work, Rona Artist Azaguas. He is a multi-talented artist. He's a friend of mine. I, I follow his work from clothes. 
And uh, fortunately, there are two works of Horna here at the museum, but I'm glad, very thankful for the video art and an installation as well. So there are photographs of artists, paintings, and I will showcase one of my favorite contemporary artworks. How many of you had seen the picture of the enslaved Anastasia in your country? So Anastasia, which here, uh, which had a mask, one of those torture masks used on enslaved Africans and their descent to not allow them to express themselves. A, uh, here it suffers a change. And, but wait a minute, because there is another important person coming here to greet you. Thank you, Juliana, for your support. So this is Larissa. Larissa, é, tem a, a, mais ou menos umas 15 pessoas assistindo agora a gente, de diversas partes do mundo. É, Larissa, she is the muse, mu, museologist of the Museum of National uh, of Cultural History here in the Mocab. And uh, she's a very nice person, welcoming us very well, receptioning us, very open to dialogue. And she said she's a little shy, but that she would come and say something if she wants. Você gostaria de deixar alguma mensagem? É, dizer que eles estão bem-vindos para vir a Mocavia e que a gente vai adorar recebê-los. Welcome to Afro Brasilia History Culture Museum. Ah! Come, 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 she's saying. E fica à vontade, se você quiser fazer alguma participação, é só me catucar. Aqui nós estamos livres para, para o diálogo juntos. Sim. É, eu só vou te pedir para não filmar tudo. Tá. Eu só vou fazer alguns detalhes. Aí eu passo e só vou mostrar uma ou outra. É, essa sala para deixar para as grades. Tá, beleza. Tá, obrigada, viu? So she said, uh, Kelly, just don't show everything because we want them to come and see with their own eyes. She is right. She's completely right. And then uh, I was talking about enslaved Anastasia. And one thing that is important to say about Anastasia uh, is that she was the first story of resistance I've heard from my grandmother. When I was five years old, this uh, can entail you, like the power of storytelling, in how it can change and promote changes in lives of young people and in the people of pe the life of people. Anastasia, uh, Anastasia, my mother said, my grandmother said that she was tortured and enslaved and she had a, a great power of making miracles with her words and saying, mobilizing people, uniting black people against slavery. And she was a powerful woman because despite being tortured by the one who thought it was her master and owner, she, she didn't really, um, uh, she didn't, uh, how can I say that? She was strong enough to resist and not let herself be subjugated by his power or the power of the, her, the enslaved society where she was uh, living. So the representation of Anastasia, she is worshipped in the Catholic Church in the Our Lady of Rosary of the Black People Fraternity here in Rio de Janeiro as, a, as a, an important icon, a queen of power to mobilize black people in our history from the 19th century. And when my mother, grandmother told me that story, I was really empowered as a woman because I thought, well, this woman, she was tortured, but she was able to resist. Her master wanted to exploit her, to rape her, to shut her mouth, but she resisted until death. But she never, she never made what he wanted to lose what her, her integrity as a woman. So that was my first lesson of resistance that my, that will set like a divider of waters in our, in my life as an educator. And the place that women need to occupy of not accepting harassment or being abused. And Anastasia, who was known as the Escrava Anastasia, and enslaved Anastasia, 
is being now, uh, uh, many educators are inviting us to reframe her name. Not Escrava Anastasia, but the Queen Anastasia. And because she was known as being one of the queens being kidnapped in Africa and brought to Rio de Janeiro, to Brazil, as a slave. And for the, our whole life, she was represented with a mask. And now, this artist called Yuri Cruz, who is a contemporary artist, Yuri Cruz, he wrote the title, Monumento, Monument to the Voice of Anastasia. And he did this artwork this year, saying, Anastasia, free. Anastasia, livre. And what he did, he created a new face, giving Anastasia a mouth and a face that she was destituted of throughout history. But note, for a long, long time, she became well known all over the world, but especially in Brazil, because of her deeds. But nobody knows the details of her history because we had a lot of our history broken. But how come I, here as a tour guide, I lead tours around the city and people say from the US, I've seen an image of this woman in the US. I've seen an image of uh, Anastasia in, in, the, in the International Slavery Museum. So how come that would happen? How come this woman in Brazil has her memory spread all over the globe? the memory of resistance. This room will showcase other works related to the women of Axé and the Orishas. And I will invite you to see one of the paintings of this, this room, which is the painting of painter Alcimar, showcasing a terreiro ground. Terreiro ground where the Afro-Brazilian celebrations of our religion, of the candomblé, takes place, with the matriarchal system being represented here and a lot of the syncretism of the Orishas and the statues of the Catholic Church. Something that I already talked to you in other tours on the Women of Axé tour here in the area, and that is represented one session of the candomblé here, bringing the Orishas the Mothers of Saints, of Mãe de Santos, leading ceremonies of Candomblé. Please let me know if you have any questions. I can answer you any, any questions. If I don't know, I will just research more. And uh, if I know, I will be glad to share with you, okay? So dance uh, in Brazil and samba music just exists because of ancestral knowledge, because the music is originated, it's created to give place to the Orishas to manifest and come, and people get entranced in receiving the spirits of the Orishas to acknowledge in this ancestral spirits and to also advise members of the community. So then in this context, the music and the samba music and the batukis originate our rhythms originate our songs, our music, and later also our carnival. Here there is the work of another important painter of the Little Africa, Heitor dos Prazeres, who was a composer, a black artist and painter in the 60s and 50s, and he became famous for being one of the artists that mostly represented the lives of people in the Little Africa and in the Praça Onze region. This room here specifically is one of my favorites. It's very beautiful, bringing a lot of our ancestry and roots. So I hope you come to see the exhibition here in person. And with that introduction that I'm giving, when you come to Rio, you have, you, you have an idea of a lot of our culture, of who we are, how we connect and, uh, through our ancestry. 
Now I'm uh, going to the last uh, room uh, that I will showcase. I'm not showing everything, as I said, uh, just to give you an idea of uh, more historic context. And I'd like to know if you have any questions so far. Hey, Katie, welcome. Thank you, Juliana, for your support to my work. I appreciate that a lot. Thank you so much. Now we are coming to one another very important uh, room of this exhibition, which is very beautiful, showcasing some of the fabrics of African uh, patterns. And it's related to our origins. Black people's experiences in Brazil do not start in Brazilian lands, but on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. They begin with the rupture of African identities caused by the slave trade, with the physical and symbolic death of millions of people forced to leave their homeland. The exile affects to this day the Afro-Brazilian descendants who do not know the origins of our ancestry. So I like this map here a lot because it can represent uh, the, the forced migration imposed to African different thousands of different African people with different cultures and languages to the Americas. And this is showcasing specifically to Brazil. So this is an opportunity also, if you want to understand a little bit more of our ancestry and our African culture, to see some of the people showcased in this map. So if we get closer, then you see that from these ports here in West Africa, the Kimbundu people, the Povo Congo, Congo people, Pongwe, Shogo, Fang, Gumba, Kosi Koko, Ekoi, the Igbo, Ijo, Yoruba, Fong, Trib, Ewe, Ashanti, Fanti, Ani, Teme, Suso, Balante, Viola, Sere, Malinke, Bedouins. They left ports such as the ports of Bengala. Luanda in the current Angola, Cabinda, Molembo, Luango, making the Cabinda Bay all the way to the Angola route to Brazil. So the east side of Brazil, being brought to Rio de Janeiro. So here this is the map from Brazil, where we can see the different regions, the south, the southeast in the center, west. The northeast, where Salvador de Bahia is located, where Recife is located, where Fortaleza, São Luís, Belém, these capitals were located. And the north, where the Amazon, Pará, Belém, Acre, Tocantins are located as well. And the Amazon forest is located here in this region as well. Hi, Pat. Hi, Katie. Thanks for joining. Thank you, Zuliana. Amazing tour. Thank you so much. Kelly, you speak very clearly and you uh, a lot about it. It's a pleasure. I hope to be able to attend the next event. Ah, oh, Zuliana, thank you. Sweet. Thank you so much. We uh, have about, um, let me see. 10 minutes of tour around that, so we will finish and do the closing. We also, uh, the colon colonizers, Portuguese, Dutch, with the West Indies, company, West Indies Company and the East Indies Company, they also took people from the east of Africa and the region that today is the Mozambique, from the port of the, these islands of Zanzibar and Mozambique with the povo Yao. From Zanzibar, the people Arabs, Nyaka, 
Zaramo, Luguru, and they came through all these routes on the tumbeiros, uh, the slave ships, making crosses of like, two months in very uh, horrendous conditions in this crossing where mostly people, big amount of people died on their way of diseases, lack of food, and, uh, and the, the, I don't know, variola in English. Uh, it was a, an epidemic, a virus. They would die on the way crossing the Atlantic. And from here, many of them would be from on the Atlantic Ocean. So the deepest ocean will have remains of one of the biggest genocides in history. And still as Brazilians, uh, this reparation wasn't made what we see from our vulnerable population on the streets. So this story that I share from Hegel needs to be shared more and more and generate more impact. I hope that I can touch your heart to get to know more about your descendancy and how we connect in this history, either with, through its wealth and its sorrows as well. Because uh, the slave trade is a global uh, phenomenon, a genocidal phenomenon that happened in our society. And already, even though it seems far away from time, it's already a current fact in the world. There are different types of slave trade and of uh, slave um, exploitation of human being through human being. And uh, we were all connecting since the beginning of times in our people. And the colonizers talking about modern types, modern times, they have, and you in Europe, has a lot to do with that crime that happened. So uh, many of the wealth that you, that you uh, take advantage of today is to remember that it was connected in your past to the exploitation of Africa and of the colonies throughout the world. Brazil, unfortunately, is a, still a colony of exploration and exploitation. What makes a difference between the colony of occupation that took place in the United States. Now, I would like to close the tour with this uh, from the Yoruba philosophy and uh, religion, talking about the Orisha Eshu. Eshu, can you hear me? Eshu throws a stone today and kills a bird of yesterday. This is a Yoruba saying. The Yoruba culture, also descendant of the Oyo Empire, is subdivided into several groups, such as Keto, Oyo, Ijesha, Ife, Ifon, Egba, Efon, and more others. Today, they mostly occupy the region of Southeast Nigeria, although they are also to be found in Benin. Togo, and Ghana. In the diaspora, they played an important role in the creation of the Orishas religion, Candomblé, Keto, Ornago, and also Umbanda. Eshu throws a stone today and kills a bird of yesterday, Yoruba saying. Eshu is the messenger. And I leave with you this messenger, asking you, climbing for the philosophy of Ubuntu, Ubuntu, because I am, because we are. And if we can promote change in our world, we just can do it if we support each other for change. This work, last work that I showcase is from Rona, artist, an honor to Oshun, the goddess of the waterfalls and sweet waters. which I already also talked about her in the Women of Ashe. So I, I saw the Wi-Fi signal was a little choppy. I didn't, I hope it didn't compromise the, the streaming here for you. And now I'm coming outside of the building to show you a little bit 
of the building from its facade, but also to give you an opportunity to take uh, pictures. Ah, okay. I haven't done that. I could make a composition here. And you can have a postcard of this, of this entrance with the name of the museum. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. So you can remember the museum name. And now I'm going to show you from the outside. As you see, the street here. Olá, pessoal. The street here is uh, it's not large. So I don't know if you will have enough room to show you the whole building with the camera that we hold here. But I'm going to check. Mukabe Museum. And there is another beautiful uh, image of the museum here with the statue. But because of the sun, I think it's against, it's against the light. The VOT is coming, so I'm going to go to the other side of the street. Let's see. Yeah, from the space we have here, I will not have enough room to show you the whole building. But now the VLT is coming. And I'm going to give you uh, five seconds to make your postcard before we close this tour, okay? Five, four, three, two, one. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you all of you who are present here. I hope you appreciated to learn a little bit more of our culture. And it was for me a great pleasure to share here with you. And if you like these stories, please share with your friends. Follow the channel. Uh, remembering that this uh, on my channel is Rio Encantos. Thank you, Juliana. Rio Encantos on Instagram. The tours on Hey Go there tip based. So uh, I also make a living of uh, the as a tour guide in Brazil. And if you can support by following, spreading the word about coming here, taking a tour with me. Uh, if you, uh, the walking tours are around $20, $20 per person. And we make different historic cultural tours in the city, also promoting experiences with our network of local guides. Thank you so much. Thank you also. Juliana, for your support. Thank you, all of you who are present. And see you later today. I will be featuring and making a streaming from the Festival of Coffee, Brazilian Coffee Festival, in a very nice public park of the Paris Square in Rio de Janeiro in the city center. So please come join me. It's going to be in about, let me see, it's 2 p.m. now, almost here. Uh, in about two hours and 15 minutes, I will be there at the Paris Square in Rio de Janeiro City Center showing the Brazilian Coffee Festival, which is a very nice street art, uh, street food uh, festival, but showcasing our good coffee that we have here. Okay, with nice people and street food booths, stands. And see you soon. See you there. Bye-bye.